The Lewis structure of potassium fluoride, KF, is not too bad. Once you realize that potassium is a metal, it comes from the right-hand side, I mean, left-hand side of the periodic table. It's in the group called alkali metals, after all. And fluorine comes from the right-hand side of the staircase. This is the halogen group, but everything right of the staircase is a non-metal. A metal and a non-metal will get together to form an ionic compound, which means the metal will give away its electrons to the non-metal. Let's take a look at how that works. Potassium is in group one, and so has one valence electron. See? One. Fluorine in group 17 brings seven valence electrons. All of these halogens bring seven valence electrons. The way I remember that is that all of the group 17 atoms bring seven. Now, because it's an ionic bond, there needs to be a transfer of electrons. Potassium, the metal, will give its electrons away to the non-metal until everything's stable. Now, the potassium only has one extra electron in its outer shell, so it gives it away and becomes stable by having an empty outer shell. That means we'll draw it with no dots around it, and because it gave away an electron, it has a plus one charge. These square brackets are how we show it's an ion, meaning it has a charge at all. Fluorine, again, brought seven electrons on its own and took one from potassium. That gives it a full eight, and by the octet rule, it is stable as well. It gets square brackets, and because it took an extra electron, it has a minus one charge. Everyone's happy, which means we're happy. Potassium plus one, fluorine with a minus one, combined to make two ions with opposite charges, they attract and form an ionic bond. This is your complete Lewis structure. Best of luck.